Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture. So in the last two lectures we covered Hyperledger Indy which is a blockchain platform that can be used to manage uh, decentralized identities over the distributed ledger. And uh, in this particular lecture we will be covering a tool which is called Hyperledger Edis and we will go through the overview of the Hyperledger Edis, uh, the overall architecture. Uh, and see how ADIS works and then we will also cover uh, how to install ADIS and see some basic usage of uh, Hyperledger ADIS. The keywords for this lecture are digital credentials and uh, Hyperledger ADIS of course. So in the last lectures we saw that we can use the Hyperledger Indie platform to manage verifiable credentials, uh, verifiable presentations. Uh, and also we can use uh, Indy to store decentralized identifiers. So uh, Indy actually can be used for managing decentralized identities as well as digital credentials. But also we saw that there is a gap where uh, Indy does not specify how two different participants can communicate and how they would uh, be able to transfer their credentials and uh, presentations, etc. So, Hyperledger ADIS is a project which uh, provides shared, reusable, and uh, interoperable uh, tools uh, designed for uh, solutions which are focused on uh, creating, transmitting, and storage of digital credentials. So, using Indy, of course, Indy provides a wallet in which we can store the decentralized. Uh, identities as well as the verifiable credentials and presentations. However, it is very difficult to use India and write an application uh, fast uh, that can be uh, that can get credentials and uh, issue create credentials, issue credentials and create presentations and also validate them. So and there was a particular gap which is the transport between the two parties which this particular project Hyperledger ADS. Uh, solves to some extent. So, it is the infrastructure for blockchain rooted peer-to-peer uh, -peer interactions. So, in India also we saw that the two parties, uh, the issuer and the uh, holder and as well as the verifier. So, all the three parties are actually communicating uh, directly without the intervention of any kind of central server or anything. So, they, they, they are relying on peer-to-peer -peer communications. So, Hyperledger ADIS is uh, actually making this infrastructure available for having this peer-to-peer -peer connectivity. So in the hands-on tutorial, we saw that we were actually copying the value from one variable to another when we were uh, trying to emulate the transfer of verifiable credentials from one participant to another. But in the real scenario, of course, we need some mechanism to actually transfer those credentials from the two parties which are of course running their independent applications and their own instances of the uh, indie clients, etc. So the ADIS framework actually provides uh, some uh, ADIS agents. Okay. So these ADIS agents are actually the instances of the applications that can be used by a participant to interact with Hyperledger Indy as well as communicate with uh, other participants who are ADIS enabled or running an ADIS agent. So uh, they, these are the most popular three ADIS agent implementations. The first one is ADIS cloud agent Python or in short it is called ACA Pi. So ACA Pi is the most popular one and it can be used for any non-mobile application. It also has some production deployment. So, it is being used in production in some cases. The other two implementations of ADIS agents are uh, the .NET framework for ADIS and the ADIS static agent Python. Okay. So, if you want to learn more, you can go to the ADIS repository and read about this. Okay. So, let us take a look at the overall architecture of uh, Hyperledger ADIS. So, this is very specific to the ACA PI implementation. So, the ACA PI from this diagram, you can see that it has uh, three broad modules or three types of modules, you can say. So, the first one is the core capabilities, okay. And then apart from that, there are ADIS protocols and the REST API module, okay. 
So you can see the Aries cloud agent Python is here and it is trying to uh, or it is communicating with some components which are there in the internet. So here the core capabilities is communicating with a distributed ledger. Fine. So this distributed ledger is actually the actually the decentralized identity store or verifiable data registry uh, of the uh, which which can be hyperledger in the or any other implementation like site tree etc so this is a basically the verifiable data registry which also which is the deed registry that can be used for resolving deeds and also verifiable uh, verifiable credential schemas and credential definitions and also revocation lists if any. So the Edis cloud agent can communicate with the distributed ledger for those. This distributed ledger can be anything, so it, it might be hyperledger ledger indie, it might be something else. So currently the Edis project has uh, support for hyperledger indie, but it can be easily extended to other distributed ledger based uh, verifiable data registry implementations also. Okay. So, apart from interacting with this distributed ledger, it also interacts with other agents. So, these are other ADS agents. It might be ACAPI or it might be some other agents also, but these two or one ADS agent can communicate with other ADS agents in a P2P manner. So, how do we write applications using this ADS cloud agent? So, for that part, uh, we have the REST API module. So, you can see that the ACAPI exposes a REST API to access ADIS capabilities, the core capabilities. So we have to write a controller to implement the business logic of our application. So when we are developing an application, we need not change the ADIS cloud agent or the any ADIS agent that we want to use. Rather, we, we would be writing a controller. And this controller will be using HTTP requests, specifically REST APIs to execute certain commands in the ADIS cloud agent. And then when there is some, there are some events, uh, those events uh, can be communicated back to the controller with the help of webhooks. Okay. So actually when you are sending HTTP requests, you will be getting responses back through here also uh, as HTTP responses, but those will be instant responses to certain commands. It might happen that you are running an ADS agent and your controller is running and for example, without issuing any request, some other ADS agent is trying to connect to you and it might be sending you a credential request or it might be sending you a presentation or whatever. So suppose a request is coming from other agents then it, this request comes to the core capabilities and then it goes to the uh, ADS protocols and here ADS actually needs to inform the controller that there is some event which is coming. So for that webhooks are used. So basically our controller needs to implement an HTTP client to send HTTP requests as well as an HTTP server to receive these webhooks uh, events. Okay. So if we go into this architecture in more detail, then we will see that the ADS agent, so this is the ADS cloud agent and the core capabilities and then there is this controller which uh, has the REST APIs. And these protocols, these protocols are called DITCOM protocol, which are used, which is a basically DITCOM, uh, uh, which is coming from an RFC specified by Hyperledger ADIS. You can go and read it, read more detail about it in the ADIS documentation. So this DITCOM protocol is used for communicating with other ADIS agents. So now there is a particular standard which is being defined by ADIS for agent to agent or participant to participant communication for transfer of these digital credentials and uh, digital identities. And this uh, verifiable data registry is implementing a DID method. So uh, it can be implemented as a hyperledger in the blockchain and it will be implementing a DID method which will be accessed from the core capabilities of ADIS. And finally, as we discussed, the REST uh, HTTP requests and the webhooks uh, coming from the uh, agent to the controller. So actually, the ADIS is one uh, single uh, executable that can be configured via command line parameters. 
and it interacts with other agents via pluggable transports. So this DITCOM protocol is actually independent of uh, transports. So you can use TCP or HTTP or different kind of transports. You can implement your own transports and uh, these are basically pluggable. So uh, you can choose what transport to use. Then uh, this uh, ADC agent manages, uh, uh, manages basically uh, the storage and the different kind of ledgers and wallets. Okay. So you can use uh, different wallet implementations. For example, if you are using Hyperledger Indy, then you can use the Indy wallet or if you are using some other blockchain platform, then you can uh, create your own wallet implementation. And finally, it is driven by uh, controller. So basically, when your controller sends it a command, then it processes that and also it uh, manages messages and protocol state. So it is uh, stateful, it is not stateless. So it always maintains a state about, for example, suppose it has an active connection with some other uh, ADS agents, then uh, it manages that state and uh, it keeps the state of the connection. Okay. So how do we install Hyperledger ADS? So the installation steps are very simple for Ubuntu Linux platform. So these commands are very specific to the Ubuntu Linux platform. So all you need to do is uh, apt key uh, add then uh, key server. So the key server needs to be added and then this repository has to be added. And finally uh, apt get update and apt get install libindy. In so these first steps are actually about installing Hyperledger in the in general which will be required for ADS because we want to use Hyperledger ADS with Indy. So if you want to use ADS with some other blockchain protocol, then first blockchain platform, then first you need to see that if that is supported or not. Currently only Indy is supported fully in Hyperledger ADS. So after Indy is uh, installed, you need to install Python 3 Indy. So the Indy SDK uh, for Python 3 and that would be used by the ADS cloud agent. So this step uh, pip install ADS cloud agent will be actually installing the actual uh, ADS or ACA PI tool. So once you have installed the ACA PI tool, you can check if it is working properly by uh, running that command ACA PI and you will be able to see the versions and different help uh, messages using these particular commands. So let us check uh, how these work. Okay, so what we can do is we can first try to install uh, Hyperledger ADS, so ACA PI agent in general. So Python 3 So you can see that it is already installed in my case. So it is showing that the requirements are already satisfied. So if you have this installed, ideally you would, you should be able to find it uh, added, already added in your path. So if you write which ACA PI, then it should show you that uh, the ACA PI is installed in a particular location. In my case, it is in uh, my home directory dot local bin ACA PI. So if you do ACA PI version, then it is showing 0.5.1 version is installed. So the most uh, important commands in ACA PI are provision and start. So, so provision, so this is an important command which will be provisioning the wallets that can be used to run the ACA PI agent, ADS Cloud Agent Python. So we can see the specific help uh, statements for that. So, so this provides the different options that can be used with the provision command. Similarly, we can use ACAPI start help to see the different options which are associated with the start command. There are many different options and these are well described within this particular help uh, string. So if you want to, if you want to create or run the agent in a specific way or have some particular configuration, then you have to pass the appropriate options to do that. Okay. 
So once we have ADC installed and working properly or ACFI working properly, then we can actually start the ADC agents and we will be doing so using Hyperledger Indy. So to specify what kind of uh, platform you are using behind ADC, you can pass this argument wallet type uh, Indy. So this option hyphen hyphen wallet hyphen type uh, Indy specifies ADC, I mean tells ADC that we are using Hyperledger Indy. Then it also takes a very uh, important option which is seed. So as we went through the last two lectures about Hyperledger Indy, we saw that the steward agents can be actually controlled using the same seed that were used to initialize those steward. So Hyperledger Indy use, uses a seed string to generate private keys. So and using the same seed, we can use. Uh, uh, we, we can use the same seed in Hyperledger ADS also to get control of a steward agent. So when starting an agent instance, so when we are starting ACFI, at least one inbound and one outbound transport must be specified. So these two options are mandatory. So you need to pass this. Okay. For example, we can do ACFI start hyphen hyphen inbound transport then we have to pass the type of the transport we will be using http transport that is why we are specifying http then the host name and the port and similarly the outbound transport will be http so for inbound of course it, it has to listen for connection so it has to listen for incoming con connections hence it, you have to specify the port in which uh, it would be listening okay and uh, if we start it in with only these two parameters, of course, it will run. Let us uh, see if it runs or not. Inbound transport will be HTTP and it will be, uh, we will bind it to 0 dot 0 dot 0 dot 0. So, listening on all interfaces and then the port and then outbound transport give it uh, the proper uh, transport name it will be http i hope this would work so yes you can see that uh, the edis cloud agent has started and the inbound transport is this the outbound transports are http and https and here you can see administration api is not enabled so I will go, I will come to this, what is administration API and how we can use it. So apart from the inbound transport and outbound transport, we can use more parameters and uh, I suppose we, in most of the cases, you would need to use more parameters. So uh, there are options for logging, debugging settings and also the label for the agents, specifying the agent name. Then the wallet, we as we saw, if we want to use the Indy wallet, then we have to specify Indy. Then we can also uh, enable the admin API. Okay, so there is an admin API provided by Hyperledger ADS with which we can easily uh, get a controller. So admin API also works kind of a works like a controller. So, uh, but. Uh, we can use that for testing purposes, but it is not meant for production use. Then there are uh, automation uh, flags and laser parameters, example the genesis block, URL, etc. So there are many other uh, options. One important one is e event webhook URL. So when we are implementing one particular controller for a hyperledger ADS, uh, then uh, the controller has to be listening for webhooks. And the ADS agent needs to know in which address those webhooks would be sent to. So in which address the, the controller is listening for webhooks. So for that you would need to specify event webhook URL. Okay. So we would be going through a set of options which are very important and which can be used to set up a Hyperledger ADS with Hyperledger Indy as the verifiable data registry. And we would be enabling the admin API and so that uh, how it works. Okay. So simply uh, aca.py and start command is being used here with 
so many options. So, we will go through them one by one. The first two are already covered the inbound transport, outbound transport and then uh, the, there are these two options. So, actually so, so, this is repeated at the end also we can give it once. So, these two options uh, say that admin in secure mode and admin uh, host name and port. So, this option is for experimental purpose only and for debugging uh, edits. So, admin insecure mode basically removes all kinds of authentication from the admin API and this ad hyphen hyphen admin option tells edits that uh, the admin API should be enabled and it should be listening to this particular host and this port. So, 0 0.0.0.0, .0, .0, .0 and 8001. Okay. So, apart from this, uh, this there is this option seed. So, the seed is uh, uh, some zeros followed by steward ones like just like the one we saw in the last lecture with hyperledger indi. And then there is replace public did. So, combining seed and replace public did ensures that the did obtained from this particular seed is being will be used uh, by default uh, by edis. Then we have wallet type ND and the genesis file path. So, we have this very uh, long path here, but you will need to pass your absolute path or relative path to the genesis file, genesis transaction file. Then we can give a name to the wallet, you can give any name here. And finally, the log level and log file. So, edis will be creating a log file in this particular path and the log level we have set it to debug so that it logs uh, all kind of uh, I mean logs in more detail the uh, debug log. Okay. So, let us see that how we can start edis and start the admin API and try to do something from the admin API. So, let me just go ahead and uh, paste the same command which we just saw. So, ACAPI start with all these parameters, we can see that we are passing a seed uh, variable here and we are uh, setting it to uh, use ND. We have to ensure that uh, ND uh, pool is running uh, before running this command. Okay. So, press enter. So, as you can see it says the administration API is running on port 8001. So, let us go to our browser and go open that port. So, as you can see it, it opens edis cloud agent. So, this is the admin uh, open API interface. So, here you will see that there are many options so server, basic message. So, all these are different API endpoints. Okay. Issue credential, test, uh, trust ping, uh, action, introduction, uh, many many things. So, what we can do is, so we can do a get request for this status. So, it is slash status fetch the server status. Okay. So, this is a get request. So, let us try to execute it and see. So, we are getting some output. So, this is the server uh, edis cloud agent version and these are some other uh, informations about this particular uh, edis agent. So, this status. So, what this particular interface does is it basically sends a HTTP get request to this path uh, and it does not uh, provide any other uh, any other payload or anything. As you can see this C U R L command. So, we can go ahead and type it out in the terminal also and see that it would also work. So, this C URL command basically sends a get request to this particular uh, address and it passes a header that it accepts uh, JSON uh, type as return. So, if you execute it, it will also give you the same output as you can see here version this and then there are some other information tasks learn 7, tasks failed 1 etcetera. Okay. Fine. So, let us try to do something uh, productive with this edis cloud agent, but for that uh, let us go ahead and start another agent. So, we will be working with two cloud agents. So, this one 
uh, is already started with a Stuart. Okay, so this has the ability to create new very names with the help of name transactions. So let us do one thing. Let us start another Redis agent. And now this one would will not be run as Stuart. Let us run the same command. But as you can see, we have not passed the seed like here. We are not passing the seed here. Okay, so let us run this. Fine. So it is running in a different port, uh, 9001, as I passed here, 9000, 9000. So the admin is started in 9001. So let us open that in the browser also in a different tab. So the same uh, URL, just same host name, just 9001. So this is the second uh, cloud agent. Okay. So this is the non steward one. This is the steward one. So let us go to the steward one and try to see its DID. So if you go to If you go to wallet, then it will list wallet deeds slash wallet slash deed request. Try it out, execute and see the output. It is it is showing us a result with this particular deed. So if you go back to the terminal, so you will see that it has a public deed information which is this. So this is matching indeed. So if you go to the non uh, steward one, then in this non steward one, let us try to do the same thing, execute, yes, so indeed uh, it has a deed and it has a verification key and everything. So this deed is being I mean already stored in the wallet of the second participant which is not a steward. So what if we try to execute this? Uh, and try to fetch this deed from the uh, ledger. For that, we have a ledger section. Let us go to that ledger. Then we have a get where key for a deed from the ledger. So this is querying the verification key of a deed from the ledger. So try it out. Paste this deed. as we can see that we can fetch this verification key from the ledger. So indeed, so these uh, deeds are being uh, stored in the ledger. So what if we create another uh, a new deed? So let us create a deed, create a local deed, execute. After executing, we have another uh, deed here. So this deed is starting with 77. So let us copy this one. And now let us try to fetch it from the ledger. Again, go to ledger slash deed fair key, paste the new deed, press execute. We see that uh, there is some error, so it could not find out this deed here. So that is why uh, th that is because this uh, create deed wallet slash deed slash create only creates this deed in the local wallet and not. It does not register it into the ledger. For registering it in the ledger, we need to create an, I mean, do a NIM uh, request. Okay, so the send a NIM transaction, just like in Hyperledger ND. So what we can do is, we can go to the steward because only the steward can send NIM transactions. We can go to ledger. Then we can go to register NIM, and it will take two inputs: the deed and the verification key. If we hit execute, then you can see it is successful. Now if we take this deed and try to get this uh, verification key from this ledger, try it out, execute, then you can see that indeed it can return the verification key. So it is already it is now registered into the ledger. So you from this admin panel you can easily access different functionalities of uh, ADS, and from this admin panel you can see the exact HTTP requests which are being used for those, 
and you can write your controller easily with those HTTP requests and uh, write your develop your application. So, there are many very useful functionalities. So, for example, if you see this connection, then this connection APIs can be used to create connections between two ADS agents. Okay. And then after connections are created, you can use these credentials to fetch credential from wallet or get credentials. So, you can also use uh, ADS to register credentials, schemas, credentials, definitions, revocation lists and uh, it also supports uh, presentation. So, if you go to present proof APIs, then these are the APIs using which you can handle verifiable presentations through ADS. Okay, and these issue credentials are for issuing credentials. So, we saw that using hyperledger ADS and using this admin panel open API interface of ADS, we can play around with the different ADS APIs and uh, find out uh, learn more about the functionalities which are being provided by hyperledger ADS. So, using this HTTP uh, API endpoints, you can easily write your own controller and develop your applications that can use these uh, decentralized identities as well as digital credentials in the form of verifiable credentials and presentations with the help of uh, the ADIS agent. So, in conclusion, we covered hyperledger ADIS which provides communication between participants and uh, helps in managing different uh, managing decentralized identities and digital credentials. And uh, this uh, in I mean this in uh, addition to hyperledger ND. So, the combination of ADS and ND can be used to very easily develop applications which uh, are trying to use these decentralized identities and credentials. So, thank you.